In this video, we will reveal the mysteries surrounding the dangers of Googling the Mark of the Beast. Did you know that the United States is boldly prophesied in controversial and cryptic prophecies of the Bible? Let's find where this information is and what the Bible says about this great country, its role in end time prophecy, the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast. We will decipher what the president's selling of Bibles equipped with the Constitution has to do with the Antichrist. Is the Mark of the Beast already here? At the end of the video, we will tell you the secret to understanding the difficult symbolic language used in Bible prophecy. Google, as we all know, is a vast ocean of information and can be an excellent tool for quickly finding information on a variety of topics. But it's not always the best source for understanding complex biblical subjects like the mark of the beast. There is absolutely nothing wrong with opinions, however, particularly on topics such as this. The main issue here is that these interpretations are not always in alignment with what the Bible actually says. Pray and search the scriptures for yourself. The joy and confidence you might gain from this understanding will make you beam with zeal and perhaps boost your interest in sharing God's word. The Bible, the inspired word of God, is our most reliable source when it comes to understanding topics like the mark of the beast. Our journey starts in the book of Daniel, chapter seven. This chapter presents a compelling vision of four beasts rising from the sea, each unique and powerful. These beasts are not literal animals, mind you, but symbols with profound meanings. The first beast, a lion with eagle's wings, represents the kingdom of Babylon. The second beast, a bear raised up on one side, symbolizes the Medo persian Empire. The third beast, a four-headed leopard, signifies the empire of Greece. And the fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful, stands for the mighty Roman Empire. This striking imagery is not just symbolic, but also prophetic, foretelling the succession of world powers. In the apocalyptic literature of the Bible, beasts symbolize kingdoms or powers. We see this again in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, where a beast rising from the sea is described, mirroring the visions of Daniel. In Revelation, the beast is a composite of the beasts in Daniel 7, indicating that this power will possess characteristics of Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. It's a fascinating blend of history and prophecy. As we look further, we find that these beasts are not just symbols of ancient kingdoms. They represent the powers that have influenced and shaped the world, powers that continue to impact us today. Revelation 13, 1 to 10, describes a beast with seven heads. This captivating creature, as portrayed in the Bible, holds a significant symbolism that has sparked countless interpretations. Let's first quote verse 1 verbatim. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. This vivid description, though seemingly cryptic, associates this beast with the Roman papacy. But why, you might ask, let's unfold the reasoning behind this. In biblical symbolism, a beast represents a kingdom or a power. The sea from which the beast rises symbolizes peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues, as stated in Revelation 17:15. Thus, a beast rising from the sea is interpreted as a power emerging from a heavily populated area. The Roman papacy fits this description perfectly. It rose to power in the densely populated regions of Europe, exerting significant influence and authority over the masses. The seven heads of the beast are believed to symbolize seven mountains, a clear reference to the city of Rome, famously known as the city on seven hills. The ten horns adorned with crowns signify the ten divisions of the Roman Empire, pointing again to the Roman papacy. The names of blasphemy upon the heads are indicative of the blasphemous claims made by the papacy, asserting divine authority. The implications of this interpretation are far-reaching. By associating the beast with the Roman papacy, the scripture suggests a prophecy of the church's corruption and deviation from true faith. This beast symbolic of the Roman papacy sets the stage for the emergence of another beast, a new chapter in the unfolding narrative of biblical prophecy, which we will talk about next. As we turn to Revelation 13, 11, we encounter a second beast, one that rises from the earth. The passage reads, 
And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Unpacking this, we see that the beast is said to rise out of the earth, which is in sharp contrast to the first beast that rises out of the sea, as described in Revelation 13, 1. The sea in biblical prophecy often represents large populations or multitudes of people. The earth, on the other hand, would symbolize the opposite, a less populated area or perhaps a new land. In this context, it suggested that the beast rising from the earth represents the United States. This interpretation is largely drawn from the historical and geographical context of the United States. It was a new nation rising from a relatively unpopulated area, founded on principles of freedom and liberty during the time period that John's prophecy would have been unfolding. Horns represent kings and kingdoms or governments, referring back to Daniel 7:24, 821. In this case, they represent the United States' two governing principles, civil and religious liberty. These two principles have also been labeled republicanism, a government without a king, and Protestantism, a church without a pope. Other nations since ancient times had taxed people to support a state religion. Most had also oppressed religious dissidents, but the United States established something entirely new, freedom to worship without government interference. The Bible predicted that the papacy would lose its world influence and power at the end of the 42 months. Revelation 13, 5. This prophecy was fulfilled in 1798 when Napoleon's general Berthier took the Pope captive and the papal power received its deadly wound. The new power, verse 11, was seen emerging at that time. The United States declared its independence in 1776, voted the Constitution in 1787, adopted the Bill of Rights in 1791, and was clearly recognized as a world power by 1798. Was this timing a coincidence or what? I'll take what for 200, Alex? John continues with the beast, described as having two horns like a lamb. The lamb in the book of Revelation is consistently a symbol for Jesus Christ. This could imply that the beast, or the United States, would have a Christ-like appearance or profess Christian principles. Yet the prophecy presents a paradox. This so-called beast from the earth is predicted to undergo a drastic transformation. It is foretold to speak like a dragon, a phrase that implies a shift from its original peaceful stance to one of force and coercion. The dragon, as clarified in Revelation 12:9, is a symbol for Satan. This suggests a clear contrast between the outward appearance and the actions of this beast. It may appear lamb-like and innocent, but speaks with the voice of a dragon, a symbol of deception and destruction. The United States is a great country with its freedom of conscience, press, speech and enterprise, its opportunities, its sense of fair play, its sympathy for the underdog and its Christian orientation. It is not perfect, but even still, a host of people from around the world seek to become its citizens every year. Sadly, this richly blessed country will change drastically. Therefore, the implications of the interpretation are thought-provoking. It suggests a future in which the United States, despite its lamb-like appearance, will adopt policies that are contrary to its professed Christian principles. This beast, symbolic of the United States, is predicted to eventually speak like a dragon, forcing people to worship against their conscience or be punished. But what does this mean? What could possibly provoke such a radical change in a country known for its democratic values and commitment to individual rights? The answer lies in the prophecy's prediction of an alliance between the United States and the papacy. The prophecy suggests a future scenario where the United States aligns with the papal antichrist. This potent prediction drawn from the book of Revelation spins an intriguing narrative that demands our attention. To clarify, the word antichrist means against Christ. This papal power, according to the interpretation of Revelations chapter 13, verse 1, is symbolized by a beast with seven heads, believed to represent the Roman papacy. As the prophecy unfolds, the United States, symbolized by the beast from the earth, is predicted to lead a global movement enforcing allegiance to this papal power. This is not merely a political alliance, but a religious one. The United States, the prophecy suggests, will not only align with the papal power, but will also enforce religious practices in line with the papacy. This is a significant deviation from the country's founding principles of religious freedom. 
The implications of this interpretation suggest a future where religious practices are not a matter of personal choice, but legislated by the state. This raises critical questions about the role of religion in society and the potential conflicts that could arise between personal beliefs and state-enforced religious norms. Moreover, the prophecy foretells a time of persecution for those who resist this enforced allegiance. This implies a future where dissent is not tolerated and those who choose to uphold their personal beliefs face persecution. This prophecy paints a picture of a future where religious practices are legislated and those who resist are persecuted. As we observe the current state of our nations and prophetic timeline, we are left to really think about the implications of these predictions and the potential impact they could have on our world. What does any of this have to do with the mark of the beast? Revelation chapter 13 speaks of a beast and a mark. By what we've already uncovered, we've learnt that beast is a symbol for kingdom, government or political power. As for the mark, some imagine it as a computer chip implanted under the skin. Others conjure images of the number 666 stamped on canned goods or other objects. Yet, these are mere speculations and do not align with the biblical interpretation. This mark, as it's written in Revelation, is something one might receive on their right hand or forehead. These are also symbols. Contrary to popular belief, the mark of the beast isn't a physical mark. The Bible explains in Deuteronomy, Ezekiel and Romans that the forehead is a symbol for the mind. This is our seat of thought, where we decide or our allegiance. In Ecclesiastes and Isaiah, we see where hand is a symbol for deeds, works or actions. In other words, what we do. The beast with lamb-like horns plays a significant role in biblical prophecy and it is associated with the mark of the beast. This mark is a mark of authority, of allegiance and acceptance of the authority that changed God's law. And here's the crux of the matter. By following this change not sanctioned by God, one aligns oneself with this earthly authority. One accepts knowingly or unknowingly the mark of the beast. Uh, the plot thickens as we dive into the historical shift of power. A profound change occurred, a shift that echoes through history and prophecy. We are talking about an audacious assertion that has been made. Yes, you heard it right. The day sanctified by God himself, exchanged for another day by mere mortals. This isn't a baseless claim. Historical records back it up. The Council of Laodicea in the 4th century, for instance, decreed that Christians should not Judaize by resting on the Sabbath, but should work on that day and rest on the Lord's Day instead. This was a direct overturning of the Fourth Commandment, a bold assertion of ecclesiastical power. Here is the papacy's own statement. The church changed Sabbath to Sunday and all the world bows down and worships upon that day in silent obedience to the mandates of the Catholic Church. Hartford Weekly Call, February 22nd, 1884. But why does this matter? Well, let's turn to the good book itself, to the words of Daniel. Daniel 7.25 says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. The prophecy of Daniel points directly to this power that would think to change the times and the laws of the Most High. In the time of the Romans, the Inquisition was a period of intense religious scrutiny. It was an era when the power was absolute, where dissenting voices were silenced, where obedience was demanded. The change of the Sabbath was a symbol of this power, a mark of this authority. This goes against Christ. Or you can say it's Antichrist. So who is the Antichrist? It's a system. Yes, it has a head, but it is a system that goes against the laws of God. In Exodus 20.10, God's commandment is clear, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, the seventh day, not the first. Thus, those who follow this change are aligning themselves with this authority, accepting the mark of the beast. It gets even more terrifying. The question of controlling the entire world population arises. Revelation 13.17 says, No one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Could this be even possible? Well, we could talk about a little known pandemic that happened a few years ago, but that would be speculation. Or would it? The point is, you see what the possibilities are. Nevertheless, let's use something more complete to solidify this projection. During World War II, buying was controlled by requiring ration stamps for such items as sugar, tires and fuel. 
Without these stamps, money was worthless. In today's computerized age, what do you think the possibilities are? No one knows precisely how all this will come about, but rest assured it will happen just as God foretold in Revelation 13, 16 and 17. Recently, President Donald Trump had an unexpected Bible sale event where he merchandised Bibles that included the United States Constitution. This got him great attention for different reasons. One such reason was that it caused some to question what was really about to happen prophetically. The fact is we do not know, no matter who is Pope or President, the prophecy will be fulfilled. A new President or Pope may temporarily speed up or slow down fulfillment, but the final outcome is assured by Bible prophecy. The end time coalition of world governments and religions will finally lose all sympathy for God's people. Revelation chapter 13 is clear. Two superpowers will emerge in the end time the United States of America and the papacy. The aim of the Pope is to unify the Christian world. So is the mark of the beast already here? Not exactly. Attempts at passing a law to unify Christianity has already been danced with in the past. However, there is currently no law that mandates anyone in the free world to worship. The United States will support the papacy by leading a drive to force the people of the world to worship the beast power, papacy and receive his mark or else face death. For a moment, imagine living in a world where you'll have to choose whether to serve God or else. What will you do? Is the Antichrist already among us? Absolutely. Satan is always the real enemy. He is the true Antichrist. Satan works through Earth's leaders and nations to hurt God's people. Satan is the one responsible for all evil. Let's blame him and be careful how we judge people or organizations who hurt God's people and church. They are sometimes totally unaware that they are harming anyone. But that is never true of Satan. He is always fully aware he hurts God and his people intentionally. One of his main aims is to keep people in the dark as he seeks to take down as many as he can with him. God has given us this information to make us aware. It might seem difficult to decode, but here's the secret. The Bible interprets itself. It always has. Usually there is another verse to explain a cryptic verse. It is not advised to read texts in isolation. Believe God's promises to take care of his people. May this journey bring you closer to the truth.